Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Shadow Camping. Today I'm out again in the woods in Hampshire. Um, I've brought my amok hammock with me again because quite a few people asked last from, from the last video if I'd show them how that went up because it is a fantastic piece of kit. So I'll show you that in a minute. Before I do, please, I keep forgetting to say, if you like the channel, you like the programs that you're watching, please tick the like box and please subscribe to the channel because it helps the channel. Um, and also if you feel like ringing the bell, it's just down at the bottom and that's much appreciated as well. So I'll go and get organized and then we'll be back to put the hammock up. Okay, as promised, the Amok hammock comes in three pouches. There's the hammock itself, there's the mattress, which you have to have in the hammock because that makes it flat. And then there's the rain fly sheet. So I'll put these two down and show you how to put this up. Okay, in the bag, the Amok hammock bag, the main bag, you get these two tree straps. As you can see. So what I'll do is I'll undo these and show you how they go in the tree. So first off, unravel them. And then you notice that one end has a loop on it. And that bit you put round the tree, just about, just over head height. And then the other piece of, the other end of it, sorry, goes through the loop. And that bit's a little bit awkward, but there you go. Move it back up again so it's just overhead height. Put it tight, and that's one side done. Okay, so again, undo the strap, Put the loop end just above head height, pull the other end through. Put it down, let it dangle. Now what's important to notice with this hammock is that the two ends, there's a green end and there's a red end. And they correspond to port and starboard, which um, made in, in simplistic terms, if the red is on your left and the green is on your right, then whichever way you're facing, that's the way that the hammock will end up facing. So I want it pointing behind the camera, so the green will go on the right. You'll also note that when I pack this hammock, I pack it so that the two ends are the first thing out of the bag. So we'll attach this one. They go on these hooks, and the hooks just slot through with the arrow pointing to the tree, like that. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. So the arrow points towards the tree. So, as we said before, join them together. I'm going to set a bit of tension out of that. And the arrow goes towards the tree. Like that. There you go. Now, one thing that's quite important with these hammocks is that you have to make sure that you get them level. Um, as you can see, I think this one's about an inch low on the left hand side, so... Right, I think that's that. So now comes the mattress, so I'll just go and get that and then we'll uh, pump that up. Now the easiest way to pump these up, these mattresses, is they come with a little uh, inflation sack. So, there's a valve on one end, and I found if you lay it over the ridge line, and then you'll see that there's a, a valve you'll see a valve there. There's also a valve on this sack and it's like those chairs that you get for 
going to the beach, you just kind of waft it and then blow it up. Okay, so I brought you back almost there. I'm just going to get it so that it, it sits straight up like that over the ridge line. And then one more quick puff. And that's it, we're done. So you just pull out the inflation sack, there's a little valve in there, one way valve, so that stops the air coming out. Put the valve in. And then we're ready to insert it. Now it goes valve in into the hammock. So you can put that bag in my pocket. So there's a pouch in here, and that's where the mattress goes. It's a little fiddly to get it in, but uh, it's not too bad. And the reason that you put the valve in at the head end is because it enables you to adjust it if you need to during the night. And then there's just a zip across the bottom that holds it in. And that's pretty much how you put the hammock up. So, this is the Amok hammock. Now getting into it is something completely different. And uh, I can almost guarantee if you buy one of these and you put it up for the first time, the first place you'll end up is on the floor because they're really quite awkward to get into. Um, I've got a Hennessy hammock, which is a conventional hammock. And that one, obviously, um, you, you just sit in it and flip your legs up. This one's different because it goes across the ridge line. Now, the best way I've found of getting in and out is like this. You bend it in the foot end and I reverse onto it holding on to those bits and then you just sit down Oops, this swing. flick the feet up and hey presto they swing a lot more than the other ones but I quite like it um, quite relaxing again there's another technique when you involve a sleeping bag which most of you will um, and Again, what I've found is the sleeping bags that have a hood, if you put the hood of the sleeping bag and hang it behind you, and then do what I just did, which is to reverse into the hammock, then first time every time. But if you lay the, lay the sleeping bag out in the hammock and then try and get in, I don't, and most of the time it, it won't work, and it's really quite awkward in these to, um, to get into the sleeping bag if you haven't already lined it up in the first place. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Amok hammock. It is by far the most comfortable place I've ever slept in the woods. Um, and do I think it's worth the money? Absolutely, every time. But the next video, I'll come up in something different because you've seen this one before, twice now. Um, so anyway, I've got to get the rest of the camp set up. I'm not using a tarp today because there's no rain forecast. Um, I've got the, the extra large winter well um, fire pit with me. So I'm going to use that this evening. Um, and not, I am going to make a chicken casserole in the Dutch oven. I've got a Petromax FT3, I think it is. Um, so yeah, I'll do that a bit later. Um, I'm not in any particular rush. I got up here a little bit late because uh, I think it's about, it's about half past three, quarter, quarter to four now. I think it goes dark at about seven. So um, I, again, I've brought a little bit of wood from... Home, but I've got some from the woods as well and uh, uh, in, a, in a little bit then we'll get together again and uh, light the fire okay see you in a minute okay it's got to that time I'm using some um, fire card this 
I've also got some of these things which are I think they're the end of the bluebells. Well, the fire's going. It's about four o'clock, so I thought, a cup of tea. Oh, marvellous. Hello again. Well, the sun's gone down, and uh, I think it's about time to get some supper on. So I'm going to put the grill on the fire and uh, start warming the Dutch oven up and then I'll start cooking some supper. So here we have my Petromax Dutch oven. It's the FT3. It's a smaller one, but that's all really that's needed for one person. This one I got from uh, Woodlaw, from um, Ray Mears's company. And uh, absolute cracking little thing. Really well made, <coughs> very pleased with it. So I'm just gonna put the Dutch oven on at the side just to start warming up. I don't want it to warm too quickly. And that will give me time to do some of the veg prep and the preparation of the chicken. So. Going into the pot tonight, we have lardons, because the best cooking oil always comes from bacon. We have chicken, onions, green and red chilies, garlic, carrots, potatoes, and there'll be some chicken stock. Um, and at the end, what we'll do is we'll add some rice so that it reduces the, um, the liquid down so that it, it, it'll be more unctuous. Chicken. Good garlic in as well. with everything else. So now some water, put an organic stock cube in, put all the other vegetables in, so you just fill her up. Don't really need to do anything else for know, an hour, hour and a half. So 
just to uh, leave that and I'll come back to you when there's something uh, a little more cooked to look at. Okay, so the time has come to put the rice in. The potatoes and the carrots are cooked all the way through. Okay, so there we go. I'll just give that a quick stir. And then we'll leave that for 10 or 15 minutes. And it should be perfect. So I think it's time. That rice really does stiffen it up. See? The nice thing about the Dutch oven is that <clears throat> you can take it off the fire and it will keep it lovely and warm. There's nothing like a casserole on a cold evening when the sun's gone down with a fire going, a nice hot casserole just keeps, gives you a warmth. Well, I, it's time to hit the hay, I think. Um, fire's dying down, and uh, hopefully that deer will stop its protestations about my presence here. So, uh, good night, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> well, last night was not quite the uh, nice night's sleep that I'd hoped for. There was a roe deer who was circling the camp about 100 yards away for maybe five hours barking so he didn't stop until about 3 30 in the morning i think he was quite cross that i was here but uh say la vie the hammock was comfortable the rest of the time was really enjoyable and i suppose it's uh, an interesting interaction with nature but uh, i've packed up now because i think it's going to start raining so i'm going to head off now and i hope i'll see you on the next video bye bye